So you manage to pass the spring and summer seasons and reach the fall season, which is one of the most peaceful ones in Stardew Valley. I just love the fall season due to its atmosphere and events, as well as the music. So if you've already watched my other two guides, you should already be starting the fall season with all of your tools upgraded to steel quality and also with an upgraded house and an upgraded barn as well. For farming in the fall season, we will be focusing on either pumpkins or cranberries. Cranberries take 7 days to grow and they regrow every 4 days, while pumpkins take a long time to grow, which is 13 days. So you can only have 2 harvests for them. I would preferably go with the cranberries as my main crop, while having a few extra ones planted from the rest. For the pantry bundle, you would need a pumpkin, a yam, eggplant and corn where you should already have the corn from the summer season. For the quality bundle, as well you can go with the corn since you can get the golden star quality ones over the whole season of summer. As always, I suggest you grab 2 or 3 of each crop while focusing on either the cranberries or pumpkins since they are worth the most. You can also have a big patch of cranberries and a big patch of pumpkins that you can later on turn into artisan goods, but that's up to you. In this season, for the flowers, you should focus on the fairy rose flower, for the honey it produces, since all of the beehives near the flower will produce fairy rose honey, which is worth 680 gold, making it a really nice source of income. By this time you should have enough resources to automate a huge portion of your farm, so go for it and craft a lot of quality sprinklers which will save you a lot of energy that could be used elsewhere. And with the crops harvested in the fall season, you can finally complete the pantry bundle, which will unlock the greenhouse and will give you a huge boost in money making. If you have iridium sprinklers, I would suggest you put them there and plant your most expensive crops, like ancient seeds for example, which you may have found by this point. Also on the first of all, you should plant the rare seeds you get from the traveling merchant. These are for the sweet jam berries and they sell for 3000 gold regular quality and if you're lucky to get a gold one, it sells for 4500 gold. You would only need to take one to the secret woods to old master cannoli in order to get a star drop. For the animals, as I mentioned in my summer guide, you would need to have the deluxe barn as a priority. Depending on your luck and income, you may have already gotten it in the summer season. But if not, you must have the deluxe barn upgrade in your first few days of the season, optimally before the 10th of fall, since the pigs take 10 days to mature. You need the pigs due to the truffles they find, and they can't go out in the winter season, meaning they can't produce truffles, making you unable to complete the community bundle. For the coop, you would need to have the big coop for the duck since it produces a duck feather and a duck egg needed for two of the bundles and the deluxe coop for the rabbit which can get you a rabbit's foot. But the deluxe coop can be built even in the winter season since the animals don't need to go out like the pigs in order to produce the items. Also with the 1.5 update in the fall season you will unlock the special orders notice board which gives you harder requests with longer periods of completion, but we will reward you with some more intricate machines like geode crushers, farm computers and more. You should always try to complete them whenever you can since those rewards are really useful. For foraging in fall, you should aim to complete the foraging bundle by getting the 4 main foraging items, the wild plums, hazelnuts, blackberries and common mushrooms. If you have the mushroom cave or the forest farm you should have gotten the common mushrooms already and for the hazelnuts, either by finding them on the ground or by shaking maple trees from the 15th through the 28th of fall for a chance of a hazelnut to drop. From the 8th of fall till the 11th there will be a blackberry season and on bushes around the valley you will be able to find blackberries for some extra free energy food. If you manage to reach foraging level 8 before the 8th, you will be able to get 1 plus extra wild berry per bush. And if you haven't repaired the bus yet, you should complete it in this season, which will get you access to the desert, where you can forage cactus and coconuts for the exotic foraging bundle. Next up we have mining. So as I mentioned in my summer guide, you would need to have completed the mines completely before the summer ends, because at the bottom you can find a skull key, which gives you access to the skull caverns in the desert. But to access it you would need to have the bus repaired, 
so if you haven't completed the world bundle yet, I suggest you do that now. I mentioned in my summer guide that whenever you had some money laying around without a use, you should have used them for the vault bundle in order to repair the bust as fast as possible. The complete vault bundle is 42,500 gold, so it should be doable even before the summer season ends. The minecart bundle is also one that should have been completed before the summer season ends. So all in all, three bundles should be done in this season, the pantry, the boiler room and the vault bundles. Now back to the skull caverns. This is the place you would get Iridium from, in order to get enough for Iridium sprinklers or upgrading your tools later on. But you would need to have your pickaxe upgraded to gold level before heading there. The caverns are nothing like the mines, where the enemies are quite hard and you would need to be prepared with a lot of buff foods, food for healing and a lot of bombs in order to save up energy. Staircases are a must in the skull caverns, but wasting stone will not be optimal. If you already had a crystallarium from the museum or the vault bundle, you should duplicate jade in them, since every Sunday you can trade the jade to the desert trader for some staircases. This can be done way before you even unlock the caverns, so the sooner you start duplicating the better. As you go further down in the caverns you will find more iridium, and you would need to reach level 100 for Mr. Key's request. Also, if you haven't already gotten the red cabbage seeds from the traveling merchant, the mummies and serpents have a 0.2% chance of dropping it, as well as a 0.15% chance of finding it on a treasure floor in the skull caverns. So you better hope luck is on your side for this one though. And now we're up to fishing. You should have already completed the ocean fish, lake fish and crab pot bundles, since you could catch all of the fish in the previous seasons for those bundles. If you missed a fish from these, you can catch them in this season except the sturgeon and the tuna. The fish found in this season are For the river bundle we have the tiger trout which is found in rivers 6am to 7pm and wally for the night fish bundle found in rivers and lakes 12pm to 2am, but only when it's raining. The legendary fish for this season is the anglerfish, which can be found at the top of the river in the town when you fish from the plank bridge. Completing the aquarium bundle removes the glittering boulder giving you access to panning in the rivers and lakes around the town, which will get you ores and gems and a chance to get the lucky ring. But there you have it, that was all of the information about this season. And now we'll be covering all of the events and other things of note for the fall season, starting with the holidays. We have the Stardew Valley Fair which takes place on the 16th of fall. And here we have a variety of things. When you enter the event you are greeted by a stand and here you can buy a few decorations and the most important ones are the rare crow number 1 for 800 tokens and the star drop for 2000 tokens. For the grand display you would need to put the best quality and highest price ones, putting iridium quality fish, gold quality crops and expensive gems is a sure win, where the mayor will reward you with 1000 tokens. You also have some mini games that you can try out, but for earning tokens, two are the best to focus at, which are the plate smashing one and the wheel of fortune. The plate smashing one can earn you a decent amount of tokens after a few tries, but if you want to try your luck, you can go to the wheel and always bet on green, since it has a 70% chance to land on it, giving you some easy tokens, but it's still random so I don't suggest it much. For the other festival we have the spirit eve which is also one of my favorites. But you don't get much here. Pierre sells the rare crow number 2 and a Jenko lantern recipe, while the maze reward gives you a golden pumpkin, which sells for 2500 gold. I just love the atmosphere about the festival though. So there you have it, that's my guide for the fall season. I truly hope it helps you out in your playthroughs, since it's a season where you need to finish up most of the chores before winter kicks in. If I missed anything, please let me know in the comments below, and if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to leave a like. I hope you all have a great day and I will see you all in my next one. But till then, stay safe.